What's up guys, I'm John the Potter. Welcome to my pottery studio. Today I wanna to start a series of videos about pottery basics. So I wanna get back to tutorials and teaching and informational and educational videos with the starting of school. We always have lots of students and people interested in learning pottery tune into the channel. So today we're starting with a video about the types of firing, the fuel types, the different kinds of kilns, pros and cons, temperatures, everything you need to know about the different types of ways to finish pottery. So the fuel types of firing are electric, second would be gas, third would be wood. So there's really only three ways that most pottery gets finished. I mean, there's random ones like microwave is kind of a thing that's coming about. Uh, but anyway, I wanna go a little deeper into each one, tell you guys my experience. I have had experience with all three. We have uh, two different kinds of gas kilns in this studio, and we also have three different kinds of electric kilns. We're gonna go in order of easiest to hardest, and also most common to least common. So, let's get started. Okay, this is my kiln room where I have my three electric kilns. So these are all three scut kilns. This is a scut 1027, this is a 1218, and then this is an 818. So it kind of, these two are similar size, this one is taller. I usually use this one mostly for glaze firing, and this one mostly for bisque firing. So right now you can see uh, it's full of bisque. So bisque is the lower temperature that gets it into a state where it's ready to glaze. Uh, and then the glaze fire, I usually go up to cone seven, which is like 2,232 degrees. So electric kilns, you've probably seen electric kilns. Most pottery studios have them. Oftentimes, if another studio will gas fire or wood fire to finish, they will probably still bisque fire in electric because it's so easy. So that is the advantage. One of the biggest advantages to electric kilns is they're super simple. Uh, once you get the, they are powered by 220 or 240 volts. So you do have to have an electrician come wire it. You can't just grab a kiln and plug it in. I mean, there might be some that you can, but most of the time you need an electrician to wire it for you, which can be fairly expensive. But once you get it set up, it is simple and easy. Uh, you push a button or you start it and you come back and it's finished. It's also definitely the least expensive and easiest to get into. Uh, setting up gas kilns or setting up wood kilns is very, very involved. But with electric kilns, you are, it's very predictable, right? The atmosphere in there is going to be an oxidation atmosphere. Uh, so there will be oxygen present. You don't have the same ability to control if there's oxygen in there, if there's not oxygen in there. So the results are going to be pretty standard. I would say 80% of the pottery that you see, maybe more than that, I don't know, uh, is electric fired. And that is because it can be set up pretty relatively inexpensively and cheaply. It is easy to fire. Um, and it's just, it makes a lot of sense. And that's why most of my stuff for many, many years has all been electrifiered because you can get really cool results. One downside to electrifying is you typically don't go as high fire. So if you're gonna go to cone 10, which is kind of the max temp that most potters go, I mean, you can go 11, 12, 13, but like cone 10 is considered high fire and that's how high you can go in a gas and wood kiln. And you can go that high in this electric kiln, but it's not as common. It's not as great for the kiln. It's not good for the elements. Um, and typically you just don't see it. So electric kilns are great for, you know, schools, educational, studio potters. If you're making lots of pots, uh, if you want to get into pottery, you're probably going to start with electric. It makes a lot of sense for bisking. Scut is one brand of electric kilns that I have really liked a lot. Obviously I have three scut kilns in my studio. There's tons of different styles. The other thing is about the automatic version, like these have a touch screen and so they're really automatic. There is a type of electric kiln that I used to have as well, which is a cone sitter. So you put a cone inside and when the cone melts, it shuts off. And so that's a little bit more manual. You know, you turn on the elements as you ramp up. Um, most of the ones they sell, I don't even think Scut sells those cone sitters anymore. So that would be off a used. Prices for a electric kiln can range. If you can find a used one, you can probably get it for as low as 200, 300, 400 bucks. Uh, but then if you go up to a brand new one, it's going to be 2000, 3000, 4000, that kind of range. So anywhere from 200 to 4000 is going to be the range of prices for electric kilns. 
Okay, let's go talk about the next one, which is gas kilns. Okay, so this is our brand new gas kiln. This has only been fired here at this studio three times. It is a Cooper Works CW8, so that means it's eight cubic feet. Uh, if we open it up, I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. So gas kilns are obviously powered by, they're fueled by gas. So this kiln is hooked up to our liquid propane tank, like our 500 gallon tank that also feeds our house. And then there's two burners. So there's a burner there and a burner there that just fire propane. So you light a pilot light and then when you turn on the burners, it just fires in there. And so obviously this kiln is a draft kiln. So it has a chimney that goes out the roof. So a couple things that make it a little more complicated. You know, we had to build this shed for this gas kiln. Uh, we had to have the gas run to the kiln so that we can fire with the gas. We had to build the chimney up out of it. Uh, and then every time we fire it, we are checking it constantly to see how much oxygen is in there. We, there's a damper in the back from the chimney, so you're controlling how much air is being let in there. There's just a lot of little nuanced things with gas kilns, and they all fire a little differently. They're not as predictable. Uh, and then you are kind of involved in the firing process. This kiln was $5,000. It was used, right? This kiln brand new would probably be seven, eight, nine, ten thousand. 10,000. And this is definitely on the lower end because this is a small gas kiln. So typically a gas kiln, this is as small as I could find as a gas kiln. Normally you would see ones that are bigger, that fit you know, 10 cubic feet or 12 cubic feet. Advantages to the gas kiln are gonna be we can get up hotter to cone 10 pretty easily. Uh, we have the, the ability to do reduction firing, which means that we limit the amount of oxygen that is in the kiln and that does interesting different things to the results of the clay and the glazes. So it can turn the clay different colors, it can turn the glazes different colors, and so it's a very different type of style and a different look that you can't really get when you fire an electric kiln. When you do it in a gas kiln, you can get that reduction firing. Uh, there's also lots of different types of gas kilns, right? Like we also have a Raku kiln uh, that we fire with gas. And so the gas is a common type of fuel to use because it's so versatile you know all you need is gas and a lighter and you start that torch or burner or whatever it is and then you're pumping heat in as fast as possible um, so whereas the electric is fired with coils so the coils heat up and then you're basically relying on just a super insulated box that gets hot over time because the coils um, these are using flame to get hotter and hotter so in the order of you know electric is easiest gas is definitely the next most complicated it takes a little more effort to fire the kilns are a little more expensive they take a lot more to set up you know this took us months to get this going because the chimney had to be built and we had to go get the kiln get a forklift on a trailer like an electric kiln you can get it delivered to your house in a box whereas this gas kiln um i had to go pick it up with a trailer and a forklift and then have the forklift and then the concrete pad and it just is a lot more complicated and expensive to set up and it's harder to fire. It's not as easy, but there's, because of that reason, you don't see as many pots out there that are gas reduction cone 10. So I'll show you the, the backside of this kiln and then we'll start talking about wood fire. So these are the burners that control the gas into there and then that pumps the heat in there. This is the damper. So this will control how much oxygen is in the kiln. And we have a couple different ways that we measure the temperature. So this is a pyrometer. So that is telling us what the temperature is inside the kiln. This is an oxyprobe. So the oxyprobe measures how much oxygen is in the kiln at any given time. So if we're in a reduction atmosphere, this is gonna read like 750 to 800. Uh, whereas if it's an oxidation, it's gonna read somewhere lower than that. The other thing about the gas is we are always using cones in here, which you are supposed to use cones in electric kilns too. So this is how we measure the temperature inside the gas kiln. Uh, we have a cone six, nine, 10, 11, and you can see they're all pretty much down there. So that was a hot one. So this kiln, all, every kiln fires, every gas kiln fires a little differently. Even electric kilns fire a little differently. But this one fires hot on the bottom and a little cooler on top. So that's what we've been working on so far since we've been firing is trying to get it really even so that we can uh, get the same temperature on the bottom and on the top so that we know what's happening on all of them. So this right here is our Raku kiln. 
And so this kiln is made to fire up really quickly. So this is all fiber blanket, which is another type of insulating material. You know, you saw the bricks in the gas kiln and the bricks in the electric kiln, but this is fiber blanket. And what it does is it doesn't, you can open this kiln up when it's at 1800 degrees or when it's really hot and take the pots out. So this kiln hinges open and we take pots out when they're at their hottest. So we fire it up with gas. Uh, and so you can do lots of different types of kilns with gas, you know, soda firing. That's where you put soda in the kiln, baking soda, and then that fires on the pots or salt firing. There's just tons of different types of firing, but it's all using gas to heat it up. Uh, I forgot to talk about the pricing of gas kilns. So just like the electric kiln, there's a pretty wide range. You're probably not going to be able to buy a gas kiln for less than a few thousand bucks. Uh, and you can get super fancy gas kilns for like 50,000, right? Okay, so the last type of firing that we're gonna talk about is wood firing. And I have wood fired a few times. It is crazy. So typically, you know, it is actually what it's, I'm saying. You are using pieces of wood to get to 2,400 degrees in a kiln. So there's lots of different types of wood kilns and they are very difficult to create, right? It might be very expensive, it might be really big, you might have a lot, it might be very involved, it might take years to make. Um, and just like anything, there's a huge wide range. You can make a small inexpensive wood kiln and you can also make a 100,000 or probably a $200,000 giant kiln. So typically wood fire kilns are not just one potter. I mean, I'm just making generalizations here, but a lot of wood kilns are built so that you have four or five different people working because when you're wood firing, you are involved literally every 10 minutes that needs to be stoked for sometimes days, you know, four or five days. A wood fire kiln has a firebox, you know, where you're loading the wood kiln in and then it has the chamber where all the pots are and then it has the chimney. So you're basically putting the wood fire in there and then it draws all that heat through the kiln and up out the chimney and you're just loading it until you keep getting uh, results. So there's lots of different types of wood kilns too. I mean, there's salt and soda, just like you can do for gas, but typically wood firing will take, you know, minimum 36 to 48 hours where you need to be stoking it every 10 to 15 minutes. So a lot of times they'll fit four or 500 pots and you have a lot of different potters that have pots in it and then everybody kind of helps out. So those are the wood, wood fires that I've been a part of is where, you know, I'm helping out, I'm helping to cut the wood and then I'm also being there for a shift, you know, eight hour shift where you're loading it in. So obviously wood firing is the least common. Uh, there's probably only a handful of wood fire kilns in the state of Minnesota. Uh, not that many people do it because it's really difficult. It's hard, it's expensive, but the results are really, really cool. And obviously wood firing has been around for thousands and thousands of years. That's how pottery used to get fired before there was electricity or before there was, you know, gas. So it's really like a primitive, it's very, very fun. Uh, it's you're super involved in the process and the results can be super varied and very cool. You get lots of wood ash things happening. You get a cool reduction atmosphere happening. You can low, you know, blow salt into it and then the salt creates a really cool glaze. It's a super fun thing to be a part of. If you ever get a chance, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, my long-term goal, you know, is to have all the possibilities here at this studio. So we have the, our electric kilns, obviously. Now we have our gas kiln, we have our Raku kiln. You know, I'd love to build a soda kiln, like a gas fired soda kiln. Uh, and then at some point I would also like to have a wood fire kiln that gets fired, you know, possibly twice a year. We invite people, um, so that's the, the goal for us. And then wood fire kilns, you know, you could probably build one for a couple thousand, uh, but then most of them that are really well done are gonna be in the 40 to 50 to 60,000 range if you, if you make a larger size ones. Um, so if you're interested in this, there's tons more information on the internet. Just search like wood fire kilns, anagama kilns, you know, gas fired, soda fired. The kilns and the firing process are an art in itself right the pots and the glazing is one thing but then when you get to the actual firing and how you finish the pottery it's an art by itself so hey thank you guys for watching this video leave me a comment below what did i miss is there another type of firing you know i didn't talk about microwave i know people have been experimenting with microwaving uh pottery and trying to get that to work out because that would be pretty simple uh i don't know how what the state of that is but i'd be interested to know so leave me a comment below what do you think how do you fire what did i miss thank you guys for watching
See you in the next video.